Okay. For a movie that is directed by the same people who worked on Teen Titans Go, this movie turned out a lot better than I was expecting. The Super Mario Brothers movie is written by Matthew Fogel, who worked on uh, two movies I know of. Uh, the, Le the Lego Movie Part 2, which I really enjoyed, and Minions to the Rise of Groom. And knew its audience, and it went for it. Pretty much this movie in a nutshell, too. Um, but, and I do want to address that I believe video game adaptations are hard to critique because they are trying to transfer over stuff that is for gamers and not for people who want to go to a movie theater and turn their brain off. That is a whole task of itself. And I give props to anyone who tries to take that on. But with that said, there's been more flops than successes in the past. Heck, this isn't even the first attempt to adapt the Super Mario Brothers for the big screen. They tried that 30 years ago and it bombed hard. That's why we haven't gotten another single attempt since then. There's a good reason. And I'll save that for another day. But let's focus on this movie first. And I'll try my best to, I guess, critique it and analyze it as best as I can. Because this is a weird way. This is this is pretty weird even for me to try and tackle. But I'll do my best. So the movie is, again, it's a lot better than I was expecting. Um, Chris Pratt actually is pretty good as Mario in this movie. And Charlie Day is really fantastic as um, Luigi. And their chemistry together is very, very infectious. I was immediately enthralled by the movie just by their chemistry alone. It was that good for me, to me. Um, and, and, the movie, and the many Easter eggs that are in the movie it, like, with tie-ins or references to something like Luigi's Haunted Mansion, crap, that made me feel so warm and so happy. Like, <laughs> I, I cannot emphasize, like, stuff like that enough. Like, it goes a long way when you have uh, stuff for the fans. I love that stuff. Um, and even the humor, like, okay, I know this is a kid's movie, and it's trying to appeal to little kids, and I took my sister to go and see this movie, and for her, she was laughing and smiling for most of the movie, so I know for her, and people her age, they're gonna go and see this movie, and they're gonna have a good time. For a person like me, who's a little bit more grown and mature, um, I was also pretty surprised by the humor. It's mostly funny. There are some misses, but it's like Redfield. The hits are good, and they outweigh the bad. So, that's what I give credit for. And I also want to highlight other stuff like Jack Black as Bowser. He's fantastic and he's a great villain. Also, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. He's also very funny and uh, very awesome to watch in this movie. So, that's also another plus. Again, there's a lot of good stuff to take away from this movie. And I can't say this is bad stuff that's anchoring down, but this is pretty weak stuff. Um, but, and here's, like, a good example. I'm, a cool thing I liked in this movie is Princess Peach, who's played by Anya Taylor-Joy, and that's always a plus if you have her in any project. Um, and with that said, I do feel like she's very funny and very, um, enjoyable. I like seeing her on the screen, but then there's some scenes that don't work with her, like the training course. Initially, it's pretty funny how Mario goes through so many attempts and doesn't make it, and they just make a side joke that, oh, she got on the first try. That doesn't feel funny that feels sad and manipulative man manipulative and i feel like like especially i guess their romance or relationship whatever that is because even bowser has his own story i'll get to that later um like that um could have been better like if maybe she could connect better with mario like focus more on like her parents where she's truly from or, like, really connect with Mario, that she was also an outsider at Kami and had to learn to adapt. And with the training course like that, had to train so many times to get that right. That would have been fun, and it would have been a great way to connect them and bond with them. That's not bad. That's just something that could have been better in the movie. And that's how I feel like a lot of other stuff is in this movie. Like, um... The main critique, the plot. Let's face it, there is no plot. But again, the games had a very simple story and plot to begin with. Literally, it's Mario goes and save a princess or he goes and stops Donkey Kong. Like, very simple stuff. And again, I do admire that they try to turn it around and instead have him go after Luigi. That's fine. But sadly, it also anchors it away from being oh, truly awesome. Because I want to see these two together. They're so good together. And it feels a little less... 
cool that you're taking out the main thing, the Super Mario Brothers movie. You want to see the brothers work together and get the stuff done, not both on their own thing, which is probably fine of itself, but I give the people what they want. If you're advertised this, then give it to them. That's all I'm saying. And let's talk about the ending. The ending was kind of weird for me. Um, because the whole crux of the movie is basically Mario not giving up, pursuing his dream, and working with Luigi. It's like, he, he, that's the whole plot. He's working to all this crap just to get Luigi back. And he does. And they work together, get the ultimate power up, and defeat Bowser. And the whole crux, it again, relies on their family. They don't support them. But then they see the good they've done, the what they've accomplished. And now they support them. The whole town loves them. And they're celebrating him. Princess Peach even, like, is finding a connection to this world. So you think probably they're going to move back and be embraced by their original world. Maybe Peach going on her own thing? Nah, they just go to the Mushroom Kingdom and be plumbers there. Exactly what was expected from the first few minutes. Right? No, no it was not. But... Um, there is, the good stuff just stays with you and does outweigh the, not bad, but weak stuff that is anchoring it down. So, I'm gonna give it four to five lightsabers. It's, I've seen other better video game adaptations, but this is definitely still one of the better ones. And it's definitely Illumination's best movie I think they've come out with in a long while. It's definitely their best that I'm still gonna rewatch again in the future, so that's definitely a plus. Um, but with that said, what do you all think of this movie? Um, was it good? Was it bad? Do you feel like it could have been better? I don't know. Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, please, if you could, like and subscribe uh, for more content like this. And I do really hope to get uh, more reviews like this out in the future. But for now, just relax and take care. I'll see you later.